Hello there, and welcome to UK Diesel and Electric Railway Modelling. I'm going to renumber this Beckman Class 47 and Rail Express Systems livery that I got last year. In this video, I'll be giving a short history of the Class 47 7s, a review of the detailed differences found on Class 47s, and show how it applies to this modelling project. There were two types of Class 47 7. The original 17 were converted from 1979 for the Scott Rail Pushpull trains that operated from Glasgow Queen Street to Edinburgh Waverley, and later on the Aberdeen route. The other type were the Class 47 4s that were considered as long life machines and renumbered in the 47721793 range and the Royal Mail pair 47789799. Renumbering started in late 1993, with some overhauls at Crewe, Doncaster and Eastleigh work, others receiving Super G exams in-house at Crewe Diesel Depot. Res 47s received LED marker lights, appearing from early to mid-96, and from late 96 to 97, the 47 were fitted with TDM jumper cables to control the PCV coaches that were converted from former Class 307 electric multiple units. To speed up reversing movements at terminals and sidings, a majority of the 307 Dyron trailer cars were converted with roller shutter doors and TDM equipment. The idea was that a train could be reversed into a hub or a siding more efficiently by the shunter from a cab rather than a driver leaning out of a window or watching for arm signals or receiving orders via radio. Unfortunately, with the locos being 35 years old, as British Rail was privatised, the Res 47s had poor availability by, with comparison with modern traction, and when EWS bought Class 67s to replace them from 1999, 30 new locomotives replaced around 90 Class 47s, and gradually they were all switched off, stored, and scrapped or stole on. Whenever you embark on a renumbering or repainting project, it's important to do some research to figure out the details on the model and how they can be applied to a different loco. Class 47s have some fairly standard details differences to them. Standard cowling around the buffer beam or cut back cabs to cure a common corrosion problem resulting in a drafty cab. A square plate over the former steam heat boiler or a circular boiler. Occasionally a boiler port may even be open. Flush ends where the loco was involved in the collision and the former head code panel has been deleted. At the number one end where the roof fans are located or the number two end and sometimes even both ends. For the headlights, Class 47s generally have a frosty glazing in a rubber grommet at the number one end and lift up lenses at the number two end. But a small number were fitted with lift up lenses at both ends. On the chassis, they can have batteries only or an extended range fuel tank, or twin tanks, one for fuel and the other one that would have once held the water for the steam heat boiler. Some had plates over the horn grills which was usually done when the buffer beam cowling was removed but not on all of them. For some locos the electric train heating receptacle is mounted on the front of the body and on others it's mounted on the buffer beam. And last of all the red marker lights were either hinged horizontally on brush-built machines or hinged vertically on crew-built machines. And later, as mentioned before, some res locos received new LED marker lights with a white surround. Now this model of 47745 has a slight problem with it. Beckman have added the front-end TDM jumper cables on a model with vertically hinged marker lights. But on 47745, on the prototype, the TDM cables were fitted after the LED marker lights. If they'd not added the cables, then this model would have been perfect for a few months between being named and being fitted with LED marker lights. I could have modelled it to have the white LED marker lights around, but I already have two Vitrains 47s like that. So which loco would I do? Well, when I'm faced with a question like that, I do some research. As you can see from this document I created, I checked through a list of which locos carried a Rail Express Systems livery and which had the same details as the model of 47745. I needed to find an example with 
vertical marker lights, plated horns, cut cabs, single fuel tank, a square boiler port, standard yellow marker lights in the vertical pattern, ETH mounted on the buffer beam, and no TDM cables. Going through the list, there were several options. Since most Res 47s had nameplates, I fancied doing an unnamed 477. That left just 47761 and 47772 out of 15 locos possible with this body. I decided on 47761, which was renumbered in March 1994, and from this picture, had received marker lights by April 1996. That meant a two-year window of operation in the condition I wanted to model it as. It was also interesting because it has class 60 type buffers. And now, I was ready to do some modelling. <laughs>